what is up everybody man i just woke up oh my god yeah <laughs> but anyway man we have <clears throat> a new review and i watched it earlier today we got the blue beetle right so uh i've heard there's a lot of pushback about this movie especially when it came out box office bomb and you know all oh, this another flop of a DC movie, but maybe that's the case when it comes to the box office numbers, right? Because I think the budget was $100 million, but they made like $129 million, you know, so they made 29 or 30 more million dollars in the budget. So, uh, hold on, I'm just trying to get the uh, Wikipedia up for the, you know, for the direct, whoever directed the film and, and whatnot. So we have... Angel Manuel Soto, who directed this film. Then we have Zolo Manduela. I butchered his name. That's the uh, guy who portrayed Jaime Reyes right here, uh, aka the Blue Beetle. Uh, we also know him as Miguel from uh, Cobra Kai. So check that out on Netflix. Uh, five seasons, man. Great series. Spin off of the uh, Karate Kid. <clears throat> we have, um, and of course, George Lopez. Right to me, George Lopez killed it in this movie. Um, if it didn't have George Lopez, I don't think it would have been as good as it was. So uh, yeah, he was definitely the star. George Lopez was the comedy relief. He was really the brains of the movie, and he knew how to drive the freaking vehicles. The 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 big freaking Blue Beetle uh, uh, machine or the the whatever the, the the huge ship Blue Beetle, right? So um. Yeah, shout out to George Lopez. We have Susan Sarandon, who play, who is the antagonist in the film. She portrays Victoria Cord. Uh, she did great for, she was just real evil in this film, bro. But she was the CEO of Cord Industries. Um, she was a pretty good bad guy, right? And we have Adriana Barraza. I think she played the mom. She played Jaime Reyes' mom. Then we got Damien Alvazar. He played the dad. So uh, let me get there. there okay, just, what did I say? Adriana, she played Nana. No, she was the grandmother. I'm sorry. She was the grandmother. Now, she she at the end of the film, man, she didn't. It's like we, we need to know her past because everybody's asking, what how did you how did you work this gun uh grant nah nah you know she's like i'll tell you later she really didn't tell us so <laughs> but anyway the grandma was all right um and damian alcazar he portrayed the dad alberto reyes and the mom's name was melissa escobedo she was malagro reyes no that was the sister i'm sorry who's the mama the mom was empedita corrido she played uh, Rocio Reyes. So, oh well. But um, yeah, man, I'm about to get into the review. And then after that review, I'll get into the spoiler review. So, we have Jaime Reyes. He, you know, taken and killed by Victoria Court. So, that is that. And um, that, that's, you know, my review right there. But now we get into the spoiler. Um, or my thoughts of the film. And... Again, I thought it was a great movie, you know. I I think a lot of people, I, I saw, I didn't look at a lot of reviews that people have done, but it's, it's like people, we can't do no wrong, right, when we critique these movies and whatnot. It, just, it turns out that every movie's trash to everybody, right? So, and that ain't the case. I don't know why people go around saying movies are trash, this movie's trash, this movie's trash, this movie's trash. Bro, not every movie can be Godfather-ish. It, it can't be your typical Marvel movie or whatever you value as the greatest movie. Every movie is going to be different. So, um, yeah, man, like I said, now we get into the spoilers. So, Jaime, again, returns from college. He ends up staying with his parents because, you know, I mean, there's nowhere else to stay, right? So, all of them are close-knit, like I said in the review. Uh... George Lopez, I want to say, it was it was kind of weird because he comes back from college, right? And George Lopez's character, he doesn't, Rudy, that's his name, Rudy, he doesn't get out the car to, like, welcome him. So, but I think he he believes in, like, what was it like? I said he was, like, the government. He he, he was, like, watching out for certain government-type things. It, it doesn't make sense, but that's kind of weird. You have family that just comes back and you don't hug them. So, 
I welcome him like that. But I know he, he was just a uh, real interesting cat. So, like I said, uh, they were falling on financial. They was uh, having hard times. The sister had told him. Nobody wanted to tell him. But eventually, it got out. So, he's, Hame said, oh, man, I, I, I want to do, I want to help you all out. I just don't know what to do yet. So, and we have Hame's sister who gets him the job. And they're working for Victoria Court. And so they're going through all this stuff. They're using the bathrooms, right? They're snooping through the whole place. They're saying, we're going to get a place like this. Don't worry. We will make it one day. And she hears Jenny going back and forth. She hears Jenny going back and forth with her aunt. And it turns out that, and this happened later on in the movie, but she took, Victoria took the company from her brother because her brother was the CEO but he had disappeared and he turns out to be the Blue Beetle as well and I'll get into that real quick so in the comics and I just read one comic originally the Blue Beetle was a guy named Dan Garrett he was the original Blue Beetle and he dies but his second in command or the guy that was real good with the tech work his name is Ted Cord who is um, Victoria's brother so Ted Cord turns out to be the Blue Beetle, but the Blue Beetle does not fuse with him. It's, it, it doesn't see him as the host. But if you watch the movie, it fused with Jaime Reyes, the same it fused with uh, Dan Garrett. But the thing is that Ted Cord was smart enough to create his own technology. And like I said, Jenny explained this later on in the movie. Ted Cord had the technology he he was real smart and he made his own blue beetle but the scarab didn't choose him so he was that part is real good if you're the blue beetle but you don't have this power but instead you create your own power so yeah but he he leaves he, he was starting to see things uh jenny's mom had passed when she was six and so he he was just in her life, out of her life, she said he'll be gone for days, he'll be gone for weeks, then come back. But then one day he just disappears, right? Okay, so we have it to where Jenny ends up leaving. She's uh, disappointed with her aunt. She's leaving. Uh, Hame. Am I saying his name? Is it Hame? Because she calls him Jamie. <laughs> Hame. Uh, you know, stands up for Jenny. I mean, yeah, stands up for J uh, Jenny, and she offers him a job opportunity at Court Industries. So we have it to where she, he goes to Court Industries hoping for a job, but he sees Jenny snooping around the place. She, he sees Jenny snooping around Court Industries, but we see her trying to get the scarab. She knew that her aunt had this scarab, right? And so she steals it. The whole place goes on lockdown. And we find out that, well, we, we do know at the very beginning of the film, I forgot to mention that, the very beginning of the film, it shows them, I want to say, in uh, maybe Antarctica or somewhere, of how they got the scarab. So, uh, yeah, man. So the whole place goes on lockdown, like I said. Jenny gives the scarab to Jaime Reyes, and she tells him, do not open it, um, you know, real dangerous or whatnot. And then she fakes like, you know, she didn't have it. And she's up there looking for, you know, along with the people that works in the building. OK, who has the scarab? And he easily walks out of the place. So but before I continue, the funniest part, man, and the most embarrassing part of that movie was when he's going to the job interview his family brings him there and they're just trying their best to embarrass this guy man it's just they're making a whole bunch of noise they're honking the horns they're just real loud and you got people just looking at him he and Hami is just so you know he he's just so uh embarrassed from his family but it's just a, a good heart so after the fact Hami gets home right his family persuades him to open a box and it turns out they see this blue uh blue beetle right and 
again it chooses him so he turns into this blue beetle it fuses in his his body is all in his body bro it's all around and then it disappears maybe it crawled up his ass i don't know i mean <laughs> that's what george lopez said it crawled up your ass and he says it didn't crawl up his ass so yeah, so we see him start to morph into this freaking, he's, this part comes out, you know, the little wink, oh, you probably can't see the cursor, but the little, uh, the, the, uh, I don't really know a lot about beetles, but he's, he has the wings, he got the little legs coming out, so, but I mean, it's just nice armor tech, man, and it's real powerful, this dude is like a super power killing machine, bro, so again, that's what Victoria wanted, was their Omax. Right, her one man army corpse. So that's the use of the scarab. So yeah, man, and we have Kaji Da, we don't know that's her name yet, but she takes over for him. So he's all over the place, he's wrecking the whole place, bro. He just they have they, they, I feel bad for them, bro. They said they've fallen on financial hard times, right? And th this dude is just destroying the hell out that house bro it, I, oh my god bro he's just causing multiple holes in the house kaji dies like oh you no know, rebooting and they selected him knowing his name he just morphs into this blue beetle he's walking and talking this thing can do anything right and we eventually know at the end and especially during the in the middle of the movie that Kaji Da is doing a lot of the work for him. He's not doing anything. He's trying to figure out how do I get this thing off? What is going on? And so she's up here making the thing fly. She's having it uh, pull out certain weapons, right? Like a non-lethal weapon, a killing type of weapon. I mean, you name it, it could fly. It, 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 it could hand-to-hand it -hand combat. It's just like, this thing is a beast. Let me get one of them. So... You know, it's flying throughout the whole city. I, I want to say they're in Texas. So, yeah, they're flying in Texas. He, well, he goes out of space, right? Then he falls back down. He's flying everywhere. Uh, then he lands on a car. <laughs> you know, the, he cuts a whole bus in half. He doesn't know how to operate it yet. So, he, he's just real. He's panicking right now. So he eventually lands back home. He, he has another hole. Another hole that is in the wall at home. And this thing rips your clothes off. It burns all your clothes off as soon as you morph into the blue beetle. So, yeah, now we have Hame later on. He wakes up. He's trying to, he, he wants answers. So he, he drives. He takes George Lopez's. I, I'm, I'm trying to look for his truck. He, he, he named it a certain, it started with a C. Because he gives Hame, like, he, he has his nickname, Car Carazon. That's that's George Lopez. It's Rudy's name for Hame, Carazon, you know. I guess if you're Mexican, you know what that is, right? And like I said, bro, this family is close. It's tight-knit, man. And I'm going to get into the part that was real. Bro, that was one of the best parts in the movie, bro. So, anyway, he, he, he steals George Lopez's truck. And he's trying to find answers because, again, you know, his clothes is burned off. He finds new clothes and he doesn't have his shoes. It ripped out his shoes. It burnt his shoes. And later on, he takes it and he finds Jenny. I'm saying her name right, Jenny? Yeah, Jenny Core. Okay. So Jenny is up here escaping from these armed soldiers, right? Because they know that she had did something. And then they did show the cameras earlier on. So... And that's how they knew it was him. Like, come on, bro. As big as that place is, they got to have security cameras. And they showed it. I don't know if people caught that. So they're looking for her. He finds her. She gets into the truck. They start shooting at his truck. I know George Lopez is pissed off. And they start, Um, I'm trying to think. No, George Lopez don't go there. They end up going back to the house. So she ends up telling them that the Blue Beetle or that the Scarab is... Um, what was this? It's this alien, right? It's like alien tech, and it morphs with him. And Yohame shows her that he has it on, you know. And it's this, it looks cool, but it's like, man, it's just what do they call it? like an exoskeleton, right? It's, it's, it's all blue and stuff, it's in your eyes and whatnot. So it's this the only way you can get it off is if you die. So you're stuck with this for life. That kind of sucks as well. So 
they end up finding them. No, that's wrong. I'm tripping. They end up going back to Cord Industries because it turns out they need a smart watch. <laughs> this is weird. They need a smart watch from her dad, her dad's smart watch, to power up a certain uh, lab that is at uh, the Cord Estate. So they really need that to help them progress throughout the movie and to figure out their next move. So they steal the smart watch with the help of George Lopez's character. And during that scene, you know, when they eventually get the smart watch and uh, about to leave, then you have, what is his, uh, Carapax, I'm trying to get his name real quick. What is his name? Uh, Ignacio Carapax, Omax. Oh, so his name, yeah, Omax. Ignacio Carapax. So, Carapax Omax. So he he's there, he finds out what's going on, and then he starts fighting with Jaime Reyes, right? So, I gotta fix this light. So they start fighting, and he's, it's a pretty good fight scene. He, he's not fully morphed, I'm talking about Carapax here. He, he's, uh, he's the prototype version of the OMAC. So he's fighting Jaime, Jaime doesn't know how to control it yet, it's still Kaji Da that's um, doing the work for him. So it turns out he's beating, he, he's, 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 uh, he's beating Carapax, but then later on we see Carapax in the best of him, and then he's on the verge of killing him until George Lopez comes around Rudy and helps him out and uh, gets Carapax off of him, you know, due to Jenny's help. So then they escape. Now we have them going to court, uh, the court estate. You know, we starting to have a bond between Jaime Reyes and Jenny. It's like, bro, y'all gonna kiss already? What's going on? Just go ahead and do some things. Like you're there already, right? You know, you're real close. He, you made, honestly, Jenny was really the, if Jenny was never there, if she never gave him the scarab, none of this would have happened. <laughs> so she calls the death of the dead. I'll get to that later. So we have the three of them, Rudy, Jenny, and Jaime. They're in court industries. Um, they're, they're at the court estate. They're, you know, and George Lopez, again, who's the brains of all this, he tells Jaime that the only reason, the only thing that can get you off or out of that suit is if you die. So Jaime's panicking and whatnot. He, he takes a breather and... Later on, we have Victoria Cord, who's headed towards Jaime's uh, house. So they know this. They figure this out. Jaime ends up going there, uh, but they already beat Jaime to the house. So they're up here harassing the family, right? They, they, they took the sister. They're taking the other family members, and they're on the verge of killing them until the Blue Beetle shows up and protects them he has the shield this wing tech who protects and he, it's blocking all the gunfire because it is bulletproof and uh he, he's protecting his family he's beating all the armed forces um what else and then we have uh we have the sister all of a sudden she trips right this horror movie trip she all of a sudden trips and they're on, on, on almost escaping right and she just falls on nothing trips <laughs> that's the part that pisses me off when it comes to these movies she trips on nothing so and then we have the dad alberto come back and save them or try and save her but they end up getting caught and you know uh, they, they, they hit the dad and all of a sudden later on Hame saves them but he gets captured in the dad and his sister, what's his sister name? Yeah, I just say her sister, Malagro. I just say the sister. They try to escape, but the dad has a heart attack. And earlier in the film, uh, the mom mentioned, either the mom or the dad as well, they mentioned, somebody mentioned that he had a heart attack, you know, before, before all this happened. So he's having a heart attack again, and this time he doesn't make it so and Hami's trying to go and save him but eventually Carapax has this machine on a helicopter that captures him has arms and it captures him so there's nothing Hami can do so they end up taking Hami putting him on a helicopter then leaving and later on you have the ambulance or not 
trying to perform, you know, CPR, not CPR, they're they trying to revive him, and they fail to do, to, uh, do so. So he's gone. We have the family mourning and whatnot. Their house is burned down. I forgot to mention that. They burned down the whole house. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say it. they met to burn down. They had a candle and a candle fell, right, because they were just ransacking that whole house. So it, it was just, <laughs> this is all over the place, right? So we have the grandmother who's like, we don't have time to mourn. We have to go back and get Hame. So then once we kill, once we, once the job is done, then we have time to mourn. So then we have Jenny showing uh, George Lopez and the rest of the Reyes family the Blue Beetle ship. And George Lopez, again, he's up here. You know, he, he is, was he a mechanic? That might have been what it was. He was a mechanic because he kept kicking things. He knew how certain things work. If things weren't working, he did it for the uh, for his truck or like a little generator on the truck. And then he did it for the Blue Beetle ship. He just kept kicking it and it powered on. That's all you need to do apparently, right? So he knew how to operate the ship. They eventually go to a, a private island on Cuba. Ha! Ah. They, they go to a private island on Cuba or near Cuba. And yeah, so they run into the little the island. They take they start taking out a lot of the enemies. There's a beetle, right? So they're using different weapons. They're stepping. They, they, he, he's just stepping on certain people. And this is my thing here. And these, these I don't understand this about movies and TV shows. If you're shooting at something that's armed and that's bulletproof, why are you continuing to shoot in this thing unless you have an explosive or something? They're just using these standard guns, these assault rifles, these guns, whatever guns they had. They're just shooting at the Blue Beetle, but it's just ricocheting off of it. It's like, why keep shooting this thing? It's not going to do nothing. So the Beetle, you know, he's just stepping on him, right? Stepping on him, stepping on him, stepping on him. He's just doing certain moves, and then they got the fart spray. <laughs> So you got the fart spray that's just, you know, uh, and it, what was it? It just it just has a bunch of spray. It stinks. I'm pretty sure fart spray, right? So, and it's just uh, that's taking them all out. And on the ship, I forgot to mention this. They have a lot of weapons that Jenny's dad designed. So you got this gum that explodes. We see what happens later on. This gum explodes. You have this device that, like, uh, something that goes on your wrist that the sister had. It could, turns out it could punch a people with. It could turn into a shield. And then the grandma, she had like this big freaking minigun. It's like she is just a female Rambo or something. Like, like where did this lady come from? She she was ready to whoop ass. So that's that. So they end up going into the, the, the basement or in, into the, the lower layer. And we have the sister Malangro and we have Jenny. They're trying to figure out, you know, how to get there, right? They, 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 they how should I say it? They find like the little command, I shouldn't say the commands, they find the, the, the origins, right? They, they find out all the power that that's coming from the Blue Beetle. But in this time, you have Victoria, you got Karapax, and you got Hame. They capture Hame, they're trying to drain the power from Hame onto the Omak, uh, Karapax. So they eventually do so, they're, uh, they have one guy who's, you know, fit to do make the transfer. And he's like, he, he doesn't want to kill him, but you got Victoria there who's the bad guy. She's like, oh, it doesn't matter. Just kill him. Just kill him. So he's following her orders. And you have it to where they start the transfer process to get the Blue Beetle to, to get that thing from his body on the Chiropax. And it's working because it's draining the power out of Hame. And he's starting to closely, uh, he's starting to drain out. He's starting to pass out and probably going to die. So we have him start to see his dad. He start to have visions, right? And his dad is just at the house. They're like in the heavens, right? And this part right here is just a real emotional scene. I like how he did it, bro. The visuals was fantastic here. So we have the dad. The dad's telling him, you're not ready to come here, son. You have to live your life as the Blue Beetle. You're the new you're killing, well, not killing machine. You, you, you have to save people's lives. You are the Blue Beetle. And his dad is just showing him. So, but uh, 
yeah, he says, he said, I will miss you, Dad, but I will, um, then Dad's like, I will always be there with you. And that scene, you know, could be emotional for some people. I mean, it, that was a great scene, honestly. So we had the dad disappearing. Um, he's in the heavens. He's done. He's dead. Hame, he sees his blue beetle. He has to connect to the blue beetle because if he doesn't, he's dead himself. So he merges with the beetle again. But in this time, we have Kyropax, who is fully morphed. The transfer process is complete. The blue beetle is, it has to reboot in order to fully power up. That was what confused me because it's like, if well it's supposed to kill him but that didn't work out so maybe that's the point never mind never mind i thought that as soon as you make the transfer process that there's no blue, uh there's no more blue beetle but later on it turns out you know blue beetle is still alive and active right cause you die right so the transfer process is complete chiropax fully morphs he's like you know it's one with him right he is the bad version of the OMAC, I just call him the OMAC. He is the OMAC. So, and he's just, this dude is just a freaking beast. He's more powerful than the Blue Beetle. Uh, he's just ransacking the whole place as well. They're just destroying. I guess as soon as you turn into these things, you just start to destroy everything that's in sight, right? So, he ends up killing the, the guy that, that did the process because he helps bail out Jaime Reyes. He bails him out, and you have the soldiers look for Hame, you have the family that's, uh, no, you have Jenny, you have the sister who's trying to escape, but the ceiling falls down uh, above them, they get split up, you have the sister, uh, she's going her own way, Jenny's knocked out unconscious, you have Hame who's escaping, he's still alive, but his suit can't reboot, so he can't do anything, nothing's bulletproof, um, his, he, he's just he, he's just a guy with a suit on at this point. He has to wait for it to reboot. Then we find out that, you know, he had the grandma that comes down. She's just killing them. She's just like, ah, and all this stuff, right? So she's just loving it, right? She's like the, what was it? She what was it like Danny Trejo. She's like a female Danny Trejo at this point. So we have, eventually, they, they meet up. We have Hame go to the ship. They're there. They have the sis. Everybody's on the ship. Um, no, this Jenny wasn't on the ship. They had he said he had to go back and get Jenny, but I think the sister was still on there. It was the sister? I can't remember if the sister was on the ship or not. But Hami wanted to go back and get Jenny. He goes, he eventually does, but then uh, he say no, the sister, she no, the sister, um, she was in the bar, she was still in the uh, little palace, right? So he had to go back for her as well. So it was good enough to reboot, right? It was there, it, Hame, Blue Beetle reboots, and you have him fully just taking out these guys, right? Took all of them out. But this was while she's just barraging these dudes, uh, the sister. I shouldn't say that. She has the shield, they're shooting her. She eventually gets hit, and that's when Hame comes back, reboots. And he starts taking them all out. And then you have the OMAC coming. You know, they start to have the fight scene. So they're fighting, right? And they end up landing at a, a where is this at? They end up going to, a, they end up landing somewhere. And then that's where they have their fight scene. And this fight scene was great, bro. You had the different weapons that the Blue Beetles use. And like I said, it could go non-lethal. It can go lethal, you know. So it could fly. The other thing could fly. So that was the best fight scene in the movie. We have Hame, or the OMAC is starting to beat Hame. And then you got George Lopez character, Rudy, who's trying to distract him because he's almost going to kill him again. Rudy distracts him. The OMAC starts shooting at Rudy. But uh, he thinks, uh, Hame thinks that Rudy's dead. Hame gets real powerful and just unleashes this freaking big beam on the OMAC and then proceeds to just beat the hell out of it. And that's where, you know, we think he's gonna kill him, but we have Kaji Da, like I said in the review, who uh, says, cause Kaji Da, and early on in the film, is like, we wanna use these killer machines. But Hame is like, no, we wanna use non-lethals. We don't wanna kill these guys. 
now the roles have reversed. Jaime wants to kill the Omac because he thinks that he killed Rudy. But we have the uh, Kajida who's saying, no, we're using non lethals. And, you know, in, uh, it turns out that he doesn't kill him, right? So we got Jenny. She's on the helicopter with her aunt. They get into it, right? She has the explosive bubble gum and she spits it, right? Because she, she's about to kill it. She, the, the, the aunt has the gun on Jenny. She has the gum and she spits it on the helicopter then this thing just turns it's like uh it doesn't explode but it just fills up the whole airplane i mean it fills up the whole uh helicopter and they um they crash you have i'm trying to think now she they don't beat her they don't fight i think she punched her though but i want to say hame goes to jenny they embrace and then but you have Hame and Omac. They're cool. They're 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 not fighting no more. So you got uh, Victoria who wants Omac to kill Hame. But he's not doing so because before Hame just wanted to kill Omac, we have a flashback. Kame Kaji Da has this flashback of how Victoria ends up with Kaurapax. He it turns out they enslaved Kaurapax and people like him that took to turn him into the OMAC. So they took him from his mom. It turns out that they Victoria has his army. They they killed a bunch of people in the village. They killed uh Kaurapax's mom. They take him. He ends up fighting uh he ends up being a soldier. He steps on a mine. He you know he, he blows up but then she has this tech she has the prototype that gets him together they mentioned that early on the film well she mentioned i saved your life right so stuff like that so he remembered all that and he even said it i remember because he had a little um the picture on his little necklace or whatnot of his mom and him as a baby so you got uh, him remembering then he starts to self-destruct and this is the part that didn't get that got you know didn't make no sense everybody's on the ship the blue beetle ship Hame's like wait hold on i'm gonna come back so i don't know what he what his plan was here i'm not really sure if Pax is going to self-destruct and you got jenny no and, and you got uh uh Pax about to like i said self-destruct uh he's holding on there's a fire the helicopter crash that, that you know it's set on fire he's about to self-destruct he takes uh victoria and starts to walk slowly towards that and then cause an even bigger explosion but my thing is what what was hame doing there was he trying to prevent this from even happening but he didn't do anything he just stood there and once car packs uh blew up along with the aunt along with everybody on that island you know uh Hame has to go back on the Blue Beetle ship, and it successfully does. But for a minute, it doesn't look like that. I don't know what, what happened there. What, were they trying to make it like one of these action movies? Oh, let's wait till it blows up, and then you start to fly on into the ship. So I don't know what happened there. And then we have him on the ship start to, then the grandmother's like, oh, you can cry now, you know, all this stuff. So. I mean, that was a good action scene. The mother just stayed on the ship from what I know of. Everybody was down there. The mom just stayed on the ship. So after the fact, they start to mourn after their dad, Alberto. They're all wearing black. I think they just came back from the funeral. They go back to the house, uh, collecting up certain things. The house is totally burnt up. We have the community come down there, bring them things. They just embrace, right? And then you have Jenny, who we see on the news. She's the new CEO for Cord Industries. She ends up going down there to see the family. And, yeah, so uh, she gets Rudy a new truck. He doesn't like it, but he's just, you know, being funny. So he gets that, and they're distracted. You got Rudy, you got the sister, you got Abuela. I didn't think I knew that. Nana, and then you got the, uh, the mom. There in one place, you got Hame, you got Jenny over on the other side. Um, 
you know, they'll start talking. It's like, bro, he saved your life, bro. He, he's just there. Y'all ain't do nothing yet. This is what I'm thinking. I'm like, bro, you are you going to do something? Are you going to plant one on it? What's going on here? So eventually they do. They uh, He's like, am I going to see you again? He's like, yeah, soon. And, you know, he offers, he offers her to take her to her dad's estate again. And so they kiss. He turns to the Blue Beetle. They fly off. <laughs> so... And there you have it. That's the Blue Beetle. So, yeah, man, this that's the spoiler review. So, this movie, man, I would probably give it about a good seven, seven, seven and a half out of ten. This was, I thought it was a good movie, bro. So, but, but DC, DC ain't still, still ain't beat Marvel. <laughs> so, it is what it is. So, but, um, yeah, man, I mean, I don't know if they're going to come out with a Blue Beetle 2. Uh, I think this came out during the strike. So, that's probably another reason why I didn't have to greatest numbers i could be wrong i don't know so uh yeah man miguel from cobra kai i mean you you played your part bro but again george lopez's character was the best and i just read the comic because uh, I, I downloaded the app they got all the comics and whatnot so they got a lot of blue beetle comics so i'm gonna see how i'm gonna get that right because i had that on community tabs on youtube that i was going to review that and i'm gonna try to review that so yeah but anyway let me know what you all thought about the film and did you like it did you not like it what are you all's ratings for it and that is it man i will catch you all later let me know what you want me to react to as well so yeah